right. So how do you get a head start in your field? Let's go. Okay, now I know that you may find it weird because I tagged Quentin Tarantino, the director, um, and I'll explain why. Because the thing is, like, I believe that success leaves clues, and I purposely seek out people who are successful in their respective fields, and I want to learn what makes them think, what makes them succeed, because, you know, I still believe that whenever they're successful, they still like doing elements of sales and marketing because that's how we know of them, right? Like if they don't do any of that, how would we know of them? How would we know of their work? So I still like, you know, look for other inspiration from other industries as well. Okay, so this particular session was actually inspired by this interview that Quentin Tarantino did on YouTube. And I find it really, if it just resonated with me. I want to share this with you guys today. So how do you get a head start in a field? So um, the first thing that he explained was he didn't have the privilege of having like uh, an Ivy League expensive film school education. And he said that doesn't matter a single iota because he said that what matters is the knowledge that he got and what he did with that knowledge and coming out of college he was renting out with a couple of friends and then they were all like you know film students and everything and everyone was on their projects and doing their thing but he realized quickly that he was doing more than them and that he was somewhat the biggest fish in his puddle and to him that wasn't inspiring because the thing is when he looked around he was producing more doing more and he wanted to look up to to be around people who was more than him. So he purposely went out to Hollywood, went out to different communities and mingled around and purposely looked for uncomfortability, being in a new environment so that he could learn because he was the weakest link in any of those communities that he joined. And I believe that is key. That is like the mental mindset that we need in learning. We have to be the weakest link in any community that we join because that's where we learn the most. When we see other people doing, achieving more, giving more, contributing more, serving more, we wanna, we gotta run, like if we're the plankton in that group, we, we gotta run like with a tiny bit just to be where they are, just to get to those big wheels, just to be more. So I believe this is key. And then he said that at one point when we find our true voice and then we start voicing out like, you know what ideas we have, or what whatever that we believe in we're gonna start to like piss some people off and turn some people off and that is fine he said because what we get in return is we might turn some people on as well because what he does is if if you're really like if you know what he does he he creates his like amazingly beautiful bloody and gory films okay it turns a lot of people off but me and a lot of other people really appreciate what he does so yeah i mean it's for me it's better for you to like broadcast to your tribe who love you appreciate your work want to know more of you want to like see more of you rather than broadcast to masses 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 who don't really care about what you have to say you know you don't have like a direct impact then i think that's key okay the second point is um, he said that um, when people ask, like the interviewer asked, like, how do you make sure that your, you know, how do you get your films to be so amazing? Because he won a lot of awards, like two Golden Globes, uh, two Academy Awards. Like, the interviewer asked, how did he get his film to be so amazing? Like, how to get the effects, the angles, and everything? And he said that his job as the director is not to figure out the how. His job is to set the vision, because he knows what he he has in mind for the film. And his job is just to explain his vision to the right people who could do it. So the point is, when you want to do business, when you want to like, you know, arrange anything, it's not about figuring out how to do something. It's about finding the right who's, the experts that can do it for you. Yes, of course you can learn anything that you want to learn. However, if you want to progress super duper fast, you focus on what you're really really good at if it's a vision it's a vision if it's like managing like creating content or like marketing or like sales you focus on that and get the other experts who's really good at what they're doing like facebook marketing or like dropping ads or like creating copywriting all these people can do what they're good at and together when you collaborate you can do more you can achieve more and that is like the shortcut 
that is how you cut short the time for you to progress faster and also like the third one is like something that that made me go like what do you mean by this because like somebody asked him like how do you psych yourself out of fear? I mean, I'm pretty sure that when you do something, you have a certain level of fear in it, especially if it's something new. And then he said that he will grandiose himself out of fear. And when I heard that, I was like, what do you mean, man? Like, what does grandiose yourself mean? And then he said that it means that whenever he has a new project and it really, like, scares him, like, so much. Like, for example, one time he had to do this car chase scene and he aims his vision is to make it the best car chase scene in cinematic history the biggest and the baddest and the best in cinematic history and he the way he 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 got out of the fear of accomplishing that was to tell every single one that he meets online and offline all the production team, all the crew members, all the production house, his business partner, people who, who's like, you know, funding the film, everyone, that it will be the best, the baddest car chase in cinematic history ever. And then, was he scared? He said, F, yeah, he was scared. Of course he was scared. But he did it in the belief that, that if he didn't accomplish it, it means that he is not as talented as he thought he was and thus there's a limit to his talent so a big part of him like an inner deep desire part of him wants to prove that wrong so he will like do his uttermost level best just to like save his name the way i i understand and digest that is that when once you decide to do something, the best way for you to do it is to just create a public announcement about it. And I find this to be true because let me just share with you something personal. What I did um, about a month ago was I started on a keto eating plan. I didn't engage with any like uh, coach or whatever. I just read online and I started because I, I heard um, somebody, a few people that I really follow closely and I love. Um, they are doing keto because they they said that it gives them mental clarity, it gives them energy, and these two things are really important to me, especially when we're rushing for time. I want to like arrange so many things at once. I want to like make sure everything is done, but we need energy, we need focus, we need mental clarity. And I was like looking ways to like perform better, perform higher. So when they said this, I was like, oh my god, I gotta try this. I gotta try this keto. So when I tried it, but frankly, I've tried it a few times before and I failed. <laughs> so this time around, I really want to like, you know, get to that mental clarity that they said. I really want to test that. So what I did was I created a separate IG account purposely to be my keto um, diary just to, to publicly account myself. I mean, there's no followers. I started with like zero followers it was just me talking to myself weighing my weigh-ins every single day what i eat and then like what foods do i consume what exercise if i did any that's it and the, the magical thing about this was even though i had no followers it was just me talking to myself i felt that i was publicly exposed for like what i said i was gonna do so i stuck with the program and it, up to the point where I usually quit is about two weeks, but I didn't. I didn't quit, even though it was Raya. I mean, I, I wasn't on keto and Raya because I ate, obviously it's Raya. But after that, I continued keto again. And lo and behold, after 34 days now, I lost seven kilos. But apart from the weight loss, what I really appreciate is the mental clarity that they promised me I got. I, I got. And and energy is amazing so yes i think that you know this strategy really really works public accountability straight on now that ig i'm not even like publicizing publicizing it at all because it's still my keto diary but um it has like organic followers for no reason i mean i'm, I'm kind of surprised and people are coming up to me like you know you are really inspiring i want to like share your energy on this um, i just started keto and i'm just there because you know, I love it. I, it gives me energy and mental clarity. So yeah, I hope this tip 
like helps because I love Quentin and I think it really works. Love you guys and see you next time.